is heavily on the side of sending in a, a foreign intervention force. We have a petition right now on the Nearly Bug website and also available various of our links. We have over 100 or 200 people that have supported the petition supporting a Haitian-led solution. But why do we believe that the Haitians can create and bring about any kind of solution at this stage? What do you think will help um, Haiti right now? Do you think, what, what it is should be the response of the international community? Or do you think that it is the Haitians themselves who must fix the problem, but with some kind of, but what do you think would create a, would, would be the most effective solution at, um, in Haiti? First and foremost, the Haitians politicians and the leaders, they have to come to that point that they realize it's not business as usual. They have to sit and take Haiti's, Haiti's concern at heart. For instance, we keep saying in Haiti, and we, when I say we, I am included as a nation, we keep saying the international is the problem. You know, when you talk about the core group, neo-colonialism, of course they are the problem, of course they might be the problem, but I am really asking some of the times, are, are those leaders in Haiti, they are willing to help Haiti, those who are in power? Because if they, they, they are divided, recently they were in jamaica and i know where they were but i didn't i didn't visit them even to see them i don't want to see them because they have not done anything for haiti and they just come they came to jamaica you know just enjoy peace in jamaica enjoy the food in jamaica you know talk and spend almost a week but there wasn't any decision so that is ancient and the government or caricom brought them to jamaica so that they could come out with a solution and yet they have not come to an agreement to say, hey, let's put 80s for 80 first. Now, as long as Asians, the leaders, the politicians, or the, the, the bourgeois, the, the political class, and the, the economic class, and the poor, as long as they keep fighting, then the problem will remain. Because I believe if you have been elected, or even right now, Ariel Henry, Ariel Henry is just uh, you know, somebody that is placed at, in the head of the country just to lead. Even that, he can do a minimum for the people, but they are not willing. And even from the petition I read, and some of the gangs, there are rumored that the gangs are connected with them from the police force, from the government. So the gangs are operating for them or with them. How can you hear that? Then as long as you have that, you know you have a problem here. You have a, you have a sore that needs to be cured before you can call an international force. I am for an international armed force right now. You know, okay. I can oh, wow. so, wait, hold on. so right now, right now you're telling me that you are for an international international intervention. Peace keep me. Keep, oh, peace keep. Oh, oh, you're at I, that level I, right I, now. I am for that. I am well, for why, that. Okay, well, because before you were not, what has caused you to change your mind? I was always for a force, international force in Haiti. But even though we have the force, but Asians leaders have to put Haiti's concerns at heart. Put Haiti first. Because even we have an international force, if the leaders fighting among themselves and they don't want to come to a solution, the international force will come, they will spend the time, the duration, they will go back and still we're not going to have a solution. Okay. No, uh, so I hear, okay. And for those of us who are listening, just so you know, um, let, let's give you some backdrop. And actually, there is a recent report. Um, one, uh, uh, Barack Obama political director, Barack Obama's political director explains how the State Department and how the U.S., how they are behind the gang problem in Haiti. They are be behind the gang problem in Haiti. And there's a report I was just reading um, earlier today. Uh, um, in state.com that says that um, according to the United States, more civilians died in Haiti than died in Ukraine during the first month of 2023. Institutions have collapsed. Violent gangs control the capital and the kidnappers are terrorizing citizens. What's left, what's left of the Haitian government has pleaded for international help to the Haitian government. But historically, foreign interventions in Haiti have harmed, exploited, and even killed many Haitians. Do you agree with that? 
that foreign intervention and in fact i um i do you believe that foreign you're calling for a foreign intervention but some people are saying that foreign intervention interventions have not really helped even earlier the ih i was I, I report and I interviewed um, Dr. Brian Contain earlier talked about but before inter intervention peacekeeping force had led to the outbreak of cholera um, it have, been, have led to the outbreak of cholera and um, and they are and not only that and they are supporting uh, President Moise who was the president before he was assassinated one way he was assassinated last year or year before last um, according to the story according to IJDA it's President Moise exhausted his constitutional term yet continued to enjoy support from the state department and the united nations and he disbanded he disbanded he disbanded the senate talking about the leadership problem in haiti he destroyed the supreme court talking about the leadership problem in haiti he dissolved most of the ministries okay most of the the ministries in haiti um, and after that, he appointed, um, just before he died, he appointed Dr. Oriel Henry, who has called for military intervention at the same time that he has resisted and delayed transparent negotiations with civil society about transitional government that could lead to actual democratic elections. I think part of the problem is that part, they have a, there's a leadership problem in Haiti where the people, the leaders, cannot come together, and that has always not dug Haiti, but that has always been part of the Caribbean problem, okay? That has always... Jamaica could have been the Haiti problem today if there was no resolution between the, pe the tri tribal politics, because in the 80s, even in Guyana, in the 80s, this, what is going on, the kind of situation, the kind of problem that's having in Haiti, that we're having in Haiti today, that could have defined the political and economic situation in Jamaica and in part of the Caribbean. In ter okay, in terms of what happened in Jamaica between the JLP and the PNP, and one supported by the CIA and the US and so on and so forth. And in Guyana, we had the Burnham, the Burham dictatorship, who Dr. Walter Rodney spoke against because he was supported by Jimmy Carter. And, and the U.S. is about promoting democracy, but they were supporting a leadership group that was not about promoting democracy, but they were opposite to that. And you have Dr. Aurel is calling for an intervention force who is supposed to be promoting civil society and democracy, but he's opposite to that. And then you have a political infighting between the two groups. So, um, so it's quite interesting what's going on in Haiti. And, and and by the way, by the way, just so you know, about about I, I think yesterday after pressure from the Haiti diaspora, so there is a Haiti diaspora of which you are a part, but they're in Jamaica, but there's a Haiti diaspora in the U.S. And um, according to the diaspora, they they are pressuring Dr. Ariel Henry and um, through the State Department to support a con to support contingent upon legitimate negotiation, a contingency upon legitimate negotiation. But they, they continue to see Ariel's um, stall, drag his feet, and not make any concessions. So the, the diaspora in Haiti, I mean, the, diaspora, the Haitian diaspora here in the U.S. have been pressuring um, Dr. Ariel Henry, have been, I guess, pressuring the State Department to, to support um, um, uh, um, um, Dr. Ariel Henry. But it has the support has to be contingent upon legitimate negotiations. But the, but what they've been seeing is that a stalling from Henri himself. The last UN intervention led to a cholera outbreak, um, and so on and so forth. And so it's quite interesting about and according, and there's a video I watched earlier. Sorry, I've been going on and on about this. The last video I watched, and I'm gonna play it later. Bob Marley said, I promise you that if there is not a political transition in Haiti, this is Bob Marley many years ago. He said, I promise you in an interview that if there is not a political transition in Haiti that takes up the basic democratic and economic aspirations of the Haitian people, you are going to continue to see destabilization, destabilization violence and more forced migrations and guess what and he said that about 20 years ago and we're seeing that today um so so tell me um tell me um uh, miss uh, um r tell me what what is going on in haiti 
in, ter in terms of the political leaders that they cannot come together. Um, what is going on in terms of, it, you should talk about the bourgeoisie. Tell me a little bit about the class and the, pol and the political parties and infighting. And why do you think that is, that is, that there cannot be some resolution to the impasse between the, the political aspirations of these groups of people? Uh, first and foremost, let me say it again. I am for an international force in Haiti, yes. but not as the one we had before. Now, I have just said it, but I didn't give the criteria. Now, yes. recently, I don't know if you have read it, it came in the news even in the, on the Gleaner, that yes. a former policeman, he was a former policeman, his name is Jimmy Shelsey. And you know, he's in Port au Prince too, some work. I don't know much about him, but I read it in the news in Jamaica that yeah. he said if there is a force that's coming to Haiti, uh, the first and foremost, this force have to arrest Ariana and his government members. And he said this force should not be just like the one we had before that brought cholera. And they came not only they abuse and rape girls and boys, but they impregnated young children on their age children, having children in Haiti, and that was a complete mess. We are still having cholera in Haiti, and they came with cholera in Haiti. And we are there is cholera in Haiti even right now. Oh sure, cholera is oh, not oh, yet you know. eradicated. It's not yet eradicated. Some places, time to time, it rises. Time to time, you have few people who have it. How did the hate, how did the international community lead to the outbreak of Haiti uh, of cholera in Haiti? Well, they didn't say anything when there were questions asked uh, that we should be uh, exonerated or something like that, you know, we part to repair But the question is, but the question is, what, I mean, why, why is, how, why is it, a, how is it that um, the international community, their previous intervention from international, sorry, international intervention, how did that lead to the, um, the cholera outbreak in Haiti. I was in Haiti at that time. I was in Haiti, and I remember it was uh, somehow they said the guy they had some stuff that they threw in a river. You know there was some kind of you know allegation like that. But basically, it was confirmed that cholera was something that was brought by this force that was in Haiti at the time. So I am not an, uh, an expert on, on health. I don't know anything about health. I am not any expert on. Uh, 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 security system, but I read the news every day. I am interacting with everything from Haiti, and I know this was not good for Haiti. So we don't want one like this again. But because of what is going on now, and the government, the police force, they are not at the level to curb or to eradicate or to stand up with those gunmen. Now we need a force not to go and take over but to go and to help and equip the police force, to stand with the police force, that the police force will be able to face off with those gunsmen. We don't want one that would go and control Haiti and take over. No, we don't want an, an, an international force for that. But we want an international force that will work alongside the police force, alongside the police force, and, you know, establish order and uh, principles in Haiti. But the problem, again, to answer the question is that, the problem of Haiti is a problem of conscience. Now, speaking about the, 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 the bourgeoisie, the, the class, and this is something, as, as long as Haiti is not functioning properly, it is more beneficial to the class of bourgeoisie, the bourgeois. When Haiti is in trouble, when there is turmoil, there are chaos in Haiti, then the political class and the bourgeoisie, they benefit from it. They okay. benefit from it. So because there are people who are benefiting from the instability in Haiti. Of they, course, uh, of course, they benefit from instability. Because once there is stability, so basically, you know, the food that we have in the countryside, there will be a way of transportation, and you will bring them to port au -Prince. For instance, in Haiti, in, the, in, a, in, a, in a parish that's called Atiboni, where Haiti have rice 
as a part of our cul cultivation. We cultivate rice, part of the agriculture. But yeah. the bourgeoisie class, those guys who import rice in Haiti, they don't want the rice of Haiti to spread out for the people to get it because they will always get to import. So what they do now, they cripple the agriculture system so that they can import rice. They cripple the agriculture system so that they can import egg from overseas. They can import meat. They can import sausage. So everything that we can manufacture in Haiti, they weaken the system. They weaken the manufacture system. They weaken the agriculture system so that they can import more. And more they import is more money they make. So when the people are in trouble, the people are hungry, and the food that me, I am from a countryside from Haiti, I'm not from public works. Now where I am from, we have a lot of peas, black beans and red beans, red peas we cook in here, Jamaica, red peas, rice and red peas. I, I know where they cultivate that in my path, but there is no transportation, vehicle cannot reach where I'm from. So mm. when the population where I'm from, you know, when they're reaching the season that they have so much of these peas, the only thing they can do with it is eat it and you yes. just use it between themselves. But this peas cannot be transported into Port-au-Prince where it can be used, where they can sell it for money. So they can get money to send people like me to school. So they can get money for them to survive. But what they do, you can go to a home and the only thing they have on the, on the fire is a big pot of peas. They have no rice to put in there. They have no other thing. It's just the peas they eat because they cannot transport it nowhere else. And they have nothing to put in the peas. They eat peas. But the bourgeoisie, the, polit the political class, the bourgeoisie, now they get to import peas from overseas and sell in port au And while the local peas cannot be sold. So the problem in Haiti is a problem of greed, is a problem of conscience, is a problem of wickedness, and it is an ancient problem. It's not anybody else's problem. It's not your problem, Dr. Mackenzie. You are trying yeah. to help. But it's an ancient problem. Is 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 greed? Is too much? The bourgeoisie, the more they want, more they have, and the more they want, and more they want, they have to cripple the people. They have to cripple the government. They have to cripple the the, the, the police force, and, and so that they can rise. And when they rise now, they have control of the government. They just follow Ariel Henry. They say Ariel Henry, listen, no, you know I have. Uh, uh, what than 20 ton of rice coming this week i want the pot to be open and how much money that will cost now ariel pay give them to bring it in then they give ariel some money for instance then they have to sell it with more money double the price so that they can make their money now uh, gun uh, Haiti, Haiti, doesn't, Haiti doesn't make gun Haiti. we don't fabricate gun in Haiti. all the they, they whip on the high powered whip on the rifle you hear in Haiti. Haiti does it manufacture gold. So where they come from? They come from somewhere. Now how they pass the port? How they pass the port to enter the country? How they pass when they reach the war? How do they come in? They come in. Yeah. They come in because because the, the bourgeoisie, the economic class is so powerful. And that's why the president, Jovenel Moise, he benefited from them. He became president. But after he became president now, because he coming from the class like me, from the mass, from the poor class like me. So after he became president now, he said, listen to me, guys. I know what you're doing. Every day you call me so that you can import more rice. But I tell you, I want agriculture in the country. I want the country to, to, to cultivate sweet potato. I want them to cultivate plantain, banana rice because we have potential to do that and they say okay then drop that noise if that's what you say now we pay money we bring you to power to facilitate us and now you're spreading the news about what we are doing then we're going to kill you and that's what they kill him oh wow 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 okay so he was there there was there was a faction a group that was against the bourgeois a particular class that was against ariel who believed that he was not, he was working against them based on his policies to develop the agriculture in the country until he was assassinated. Jovenel Moise. Jovenel Moise. Jovenel Moise. Sorry. Jovenel. I apologize. Yeah. Jovenel Moise. Okay, wow. Yeah. This is quite um, revealing. But, but the, problem, but the yes. problem with Jovenel Moise, these guys, they are the people who will put you in power. When you become a candidate and they realize you are somebody who is, you know, a candidate that, you know, you can become president, what they do, they invest in you. Because there was, I remember when we had uh, Hurricane Matthew. Hurricane Matthew.